Howdy folks and welcome to the Bees Knees. On today's video I'm going to be presenting to you the T-57, the American Tier 10 heavy tank. This is pretty much a support tank if you guys are not familiar with it. It's a support tank, basically you don't really have a lot of armor, you just go with your teammates and try to help them, you know, kill enemy tanks. Let other people go in, take the shots and you just, you know, clean up with your other load of bang bang bang. Clean up like a boss. We're on uh, Himmelsdorf. And uh, because this is a support tank and I took a look on my uh, enemy tanks, I decided it's best for me to go up the hill. Why? Because if I would go on the banana, which is like where, you know, the armor tanks usually fight, I wouldn't be able to do much with this tank because I kind of need to like close in the target and clip, right? On the banana, for example, all you can do is like shoot from the distance cool down tank so I really wouldn't be able to like achieve anything that I want to do with a tank like this so instead I uh, decided that I'm gonna go up the hill and this works with any tank that doesn't necessarily have a lot of armor right when you go up the hill you're most likely gonna be fighting less armor tanks aka mediums so you know if you don't have like an armored behemoth it's a good tactic right Right now I wanted to climb up so I can like maybe try to clip the T5A. I was telling DSD to like give me a bit of room to like uh, maneuver so I can clip him. And I started with a nice snap. Set him on fire but it's going back. Uh, yeah, as far as the equipment goes on this tank, I'm using uh, depending on the maps of course. I'm using vertical stabs, optics and uh, ventilation I believe on... Um, open maps and when I do get city maps I'm using vertical stabs hardening of course for extra HP and ventilation uh, I noticed as I was like trying to fight up the hill that we lost the banana we lost the hill right what does this mean I need to turn around because I'm about to lose <laughs> the game and I don't know if you noticed but I decided to actually prioritize killing the bobjick because if I didn't kill him then while well, I had like a super easy uh, shot it would have been like a lot harder for me later and speaking of prioritizing watch what I do next I told you guys numerous times whenever you're fighting multiple two or three or more enemy tanks at the same time you need to try to mitigate damage you take you need to try to like either hide behind some of them so only like one or like so not all of them get to shoot you right so what do you think we should do in this particular situation? I gave you some time to think, now I'll tell you. There's a VZ, there's a Mod 1 and a 1092. Out of all these three tanks, only the VZ-55 can really hurt me badly. He's got the penetration, he's got the auto loader. 1092 has like low penetration, 175 standard I believe. T-54 Mod 1 also has like 192 I think standard. None of them like really scare me they both have low alpha and they can't really like put a dent on me so what do I want to do kill the 55 first and that's exactly what I plan on doing he's retreating but I'm still gonna go for it even if the little light is behind me now I'm gonna kill the little light because he went behind me and he can actually do damage to me prioritizing and just like that I managed to kill two tanks in one go and you know managed to win a Three versus one situation right now all I gotta do is face out the T-54 if he pans me good if he doesn't pan me it's still good I'm gonna kill him because I reload fast and uh, you know he said if I came with a sandwich <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that was very nice yeah just to give you an idea of how you should proceed in these kind of situations right you want to try to like mitigate the damage you receive Either by hiding behind other tanks or like prioritizing the tanks that can really hurt you and leaving the ones that are less scary for later. That's why we plan and we do tic tacs. Also, like a lot of like cute little thing I'm gonna do now. You see, there's a T55A coming from the banana, right? If I was to just sit here now and do go drive straight towards him on the street, what would happen? He would just stop and fight me cool down. That'd be annoying, right? What did I do though? I hit a little bit behind the ridge lines. <laughs> he's gonna pass. He's gonna see that I'm not here and he's gonna go confidently. 
And then all I gotta do is just peek out like a boss and... Exactly, he's mine. Small things like these can matter a lot. This, I'm not really posting this game because it's necessarily like super exciting or anything. I'm just trying to show you that small things like these, planning your routes, just like a little bit of thought process put into like what you're about to do, will matter a lot, you know? Small decisions definitely do matter a lot. Uh, depending on the matter on, you know, the outcome of the game. Yeah. Well, now we got like a couple of tanks left. So I decided to push through the middle of the map because I might be able to catch him off here. And that's exactly what happened. We got a Miliano and we got a Boras. So all I gotta do is clip him. Easy damage for me. It's kind of like best case scenario for a T7, you know? You peek, you like flank them a little bit if you can. And uh, catch him off guard. Because this thing can burst its damage very, very fast. So it's quite easy to catch him off guard. At this point, I'm reloading, so I decided it's best if I just start driving towards the lower. I loaded my heat because I only had three APs left and I didn't really want to, like, uh, not have a full clip. Could have easily just, like, went with the AP2 in this situation, but... I had no idea that the friendly Skoda was gonna come here, so... I still could have worked with the APs, but better safe than sorry, right? Better have four shots than three, if you're gonna reload the whole clip enemies. All we gotta do now is go for the Scorpion. He's alone there in the back. Ready for the taking. But... The Scorpion Oculus has an ace up his sleeve. <laughs> He's got an ace up his sleeve. <laughs> he uh, detracked me and unfortunately I didn't have a repair kit so... No more damage for RZ! Uh... Yeah, cute game. Easy planning can go a long way towards you winning the game and having good results. Alrighty then, let's take a look at the results. We managed to snack up a nice ace tanker, top gun, I even got a steel wool, confederate metal, and the other one I really don't know, so I'm just gonna like refrain from saying it. <laughs> don't judge me, okay? I never remember medals. We managed to snack up 6,031 damage, 8 kills, and 1,409 Base XP, pretty good. I also managed to snack up 834 assist damage. I probably might have detracted some tanks and I got assist damage from that. And in the end, we even managed to uh, make 44k credits. I believe I had some uh, booster on, quite possibly. I'm not sure, or maybe not. Or I like did some mission. Managed to make 44 credits. Not really relevant because at tier 10, I don't really expect to make any credits whatsoever I know it's end game you pretty much play for the pleasure of playing top tier games <laughs> even though the game is not very well balanced in that regard but yes alrighty folks hope you guys enjoyed today's video on how to not necessarily uh, carefully plan your fights but give it a little bit of thought before you do something because you might have like better results as usual, let me know what you think in the comments below about the T57, if you like it, if you hate it. <laughs> also, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe the video and share it with your friends so we can grow this uh, business to universal levels. Until next time, thank you for watching. See ya.